So this piece is called DNA Helix of Life. It's a piece I developed when I was artist in residence here at Pangolin London. And it is a single twist of DNA, so just 10 base pairs of what would be a gigantically long molecule. And each of the atoms in it is represented by a single human figure. So you have um, little carbons are represented by these male figures, oxygen, um, are these red women, hydrogen, which is smaller, little white children, and you've got um, this wonderful sweep of the sugar phosphate backbone, and between the two sweeps of sugar phosphate, you have the base pairs that go across like a, the rungs of a ladder. And that's the bit of the DNA that's really interesting because the two strands can unzip and then they can copy themselves or they can get copied into proteins which is how the genetic material expresses itself in our human bodies. So the inspiration for this work comes from earlier work that I developed. There's a piece I called The Dream of Society as Flawless as Diamond and in that I used a single human figure to represent the carbon atoms in diamond which is the perfect crystal and that work was developed with the idea of that feeling of all life being connected and um, from James Lovelock's theories of Gaia. And it's, a, it's an, uh, a kind of a tool that I've been using to investigate uh, human relationships and the ways and patterns of how people interact um, follow similar patterns that you get um, at micro levels as well. So the kind of the interplay between macro and micro in terms of uh, human interpersonal relationships and the way atoms interact with each other. And the base pairs that I picked in this um, molecule um, are the first uh, three and a bit codons of haemoglobin, which was uh, one of the first proteins to be sequenced. And haemoglobin obviously is the, the red colour in blood, which is our life energy that travels around our bodies. The full sculpture is two metres tall and it's made out of 634 human figures, each cast in bronze and then um, slowly soldered together. Some were soldered together in the wax and then we had um, sort of 30 different constructions of figures that we then had to um, get together and put, construct into the final piece. And uh, it's been interesting seeing its sort of journey. I, it has been exhibited at Gloucester Cathedral, which is a very different environment from the sort of white walls of a gallery space. And it was interesting how it sort of interacted with the, the sort of intricacies of the stained glass and the light in the cloister of one of our sort of ancient cathedrals. The work took a lot of time to develop because um, it was quite an ambitious work with quite complicated geometry. Um, and after visiting one of my old uh, professors at Oxford where I studied biochemistry, I was able to get um, the software that biochemists use to study uh, molecules, um, the sort of proteins of life. And I was able to take all the measurements and draw up blueprints um, and develop the tiny little sculptures, the mini sculptures of each of the figures that are, were needed for the piece. And then I worked really closely with Pangolin Editions that spent about another six months casting all the figures and then working out how we were going to put them all together into the final piece. And once it was on display in London as part of my solo show with Pangolin London, I was very excited that I actually got to meet Professor Watson of Watson and Crick fame who discovered the structure of DNA based on see Rosalind Franklin's DNA crystallography images, but um, it's amazing to actually meet people who are your sort of scientific heroes as a child. And it's lovely to see it again back in London and on display. Um, and uh, it's really interesting just to sort of look at the different geometries and the sweeps of it. And having kind of studied DNA at university in intricate levels and understanding how things will come in and lock into like the large groove and the narrow groove and will twist it and that's how it sort of does its functioning. It's, it's lovely to kind of be able to live and see it in, um, in a really kind of emotive, I guess, and joyful state represented by these human figures.